We're getting set for the women's 50 breaststroke final. And it is stacked from an Australian point of view. Abby Harkin, Chelsea Hodges and Jenna Strosh. Van Niekirk, though, lane four, probably the one to beat here. And we saw lots of speed from Imogen Clark. Lane five, she'll go from... So Van Niekirk, lane four, the 19-year-old, just dwelt ever so slightly on the blocks, but gets into her work okay now. It's Clark alongside her, predictably. Leader at the halfway, pushing up pretty hard as Chelsea Hodges. She's the leading Australian in third spot at the moment, challenging. Van Niekirk alongside her, gets into her work. Clark still going okay. It's Van Niekirk. Bronze medal position, maybe silver for Australia. They get the bronze. Chelsea Hodges and a games record for Lara Van Nieker to get it done. Chad LaFoe on the screen, cheering her on as she comes in. And uh, uh, in Clark, um, who was looking like she was going to win uh, in that earlier stage. And it was only because Lara Van Nieker, when she comes up, she's actually behind. She has decent underwater work, but she's quite slow coming through the water and starting out the stroking part of the swimming. Australia, Chelsea Hodges. We see the smile on her face, but behind that, there's a story as well. Um, so I don't just think it's glory. There is a lot that goes into it, not just the physical, but also the mental. And that's the mental to win, but also mental strength and having an understanding of who you are as an individual. Congratulations to Chelsea Hodges of Australia. Massive to have Mac Horton in this final, the 400 gold medalist from Rio, but the gold and silver medalist from this event from Tokyo, Tom Dean of England in lane three and Duncan Scott of Scotland in lane five. They're going to push the Aussies all the way, Mac Horton in six and Elijah Winnington for the 200 and 400 metre double. Both of the Aussies got away pretty well. In fact, they all did through the middle of the field. Those middle lanes strong. Sates of South Africa in lane one with a very busy program, as we know. Ten swims with the relays and individual races. And Richards also of Wales in lane two got away nicely. Now the field starts to settle down and the Olympic champion's going to turn at the 50 in front. It's Dean, Sates and Richards. Matthew Richards from Wales in lane two also finding something. Increasing his stroke. Winnington's getting closer. Moves up alongside Dean. Scott's in front, the Olympic silver medalist. Winnington keeps coming. Might not be enough distance. Scott's going to get it done. What a win this is. The Scott from Scotland first. Dean second. And Elijah Winnington with a bronze medal. Wow. That was... An amazing race. Tom Dean really took it out so hard at the start. He looked so balanced, but then Duncan Scott built through that 200 metre, didn't he? It was that middle section of the race where he really started to gain. Good swim from Mac. Yeah, finished in fourth spot and celebrating with Duncan Scott there. So that was a great race, wasn't it? Great race. Scotland and England well represented and the crowd loving that. And the Aussies third and fourth and hard to fault for Elijah Winnington. Presenting Australia, Elijah Winnington. Men's 50 freestyle in the S13 class, our next event, and three Australians in a small field. Only five of them here racing for the medals. So more of them will medal than miss out. Take your marks. Away then, final of the men's 50 freestyle, S13 stubs of Australia in lane two, turbide. Canada Lane 3, Jason and Templeton, the two Aussies in 4 and 5, and Clegg of Scotland in Lane 6. 
Going well is Templeton. Also, Stephen Clegg, Scotland Lane 6, might be the leader here. Aussies needing to push through. Templeton finding something. Also, Turbid, and he got it done, the Canadian. Templeton gets the bronze. Turbide with the gold, Clegg the silver, and Templeton, another bronze medal for Australia. Great job by Templeton. I thought he was going to get the touch on the wall. He looked like he was possibly in a chance with gold there. It came down really to the touch. He had a really high stroke rate, Jacob Templeton. In comparison to Brayden Jason, who was alongside him, slightly different techniques. But wonderful also to see this camaraderie between the athletes. Often the athletes in this classification don't know if they've won or what their time is until they get out of the pool and someone tells them. They can't see the clock at the back of the pool and we can see them travelling off the start. Jacob Templeton had a fantastic start. You can see the power he drives from his core and upper body and a strong six feet kick and it really came down to that touch. So a bronze medal for the Aussies in the men's 50 freestyle S13 and now the women's 50 freestyle S13. And Katja Dedekind, the 20-year-old, fourth in this event in Tokyo, the Australian record holder. She'll start in lane four here and another three Australians. Away in the final of the women's 50 freestyle S13. Katja Dedekind in lane four for Australia. Julie Hayes alongside her. Very good start by the Aussie in lane four. And Jenna Jones just a little off the pace and now pushing up into fourth spot. Dedekind in front. Could she hang on here? Alongside her, Hannah Russell of England. Sixth at Tokyo. It's another one coming for Australia. Katja Dedekind gets it done and breaks the world record. Wow. Oh my goodness, oh, Katia Dedekin, unbelievable, what a swim. She's got no idea, she's just broken the world record and wasn't she dominant from start to finish. I hope someone leans down and tells her she's just broken the world record. A world record which has stood since 2009 back in Rio. During the super suit era, I think she's aware, I hope she is. She had a brilliant start, and my goodness, she worked that underwater kick right to the 15 metre mark. That is where you get the most speed during the race, the most power. I think she's saying she doesn't know. She's gonna find out in a moment, and she'll be absolutely elated. One of the most amazing interviews I've ever heard was Cartier's interview when she won a bronze medal in Tokyo. She was so over the moon, so we can only imagine here. Here we can see her traveling. Look at the power she generates underwater. She really led from start to finish. Her body so smooth, and it's so important athletes turn their core on, rotate their shoulders, a perfect touch on the wall. But unbelievable. Congratulations, Cartier. And Kiralee Hayes, the bronze medal. What a super swim from the 18-year-old. So Australia first and third, and Jenna Jones in fourth. Well done, catcher. Another gold medal in a world record time. Medalist representing Australia, Kiralee Hayes. Amazing athletes and friends. And we see Kiralee Hayes winning a bronze medal. She's just 18 years of age. Made her Paralympic debut Australia, in Tokyo. Catcher Dedekins. Congratulations, Katia. What a moment. Bronze medalist from the Tokyo Games. Ranked world number one going into this. Had just won a gold medal at the Para World Championships and now a Commonwealth Games gold medalist. Gold medal in the women's 100 freestyle S13 in world record time and Kiralee Hayes on the podium with her. Congratulations also to the silver medalist from England, Hannah Russell. Men's 400 individual medley. Brendan Smith of Australia will start in lane five here. The bronze medalist from Tokyo, probably 
the favourite of the three Australians, but Lewis Clairbert of New Zealand. Lane four, maybe the one to beat here, Thorpey. So away we go. It is one of the most gruelling events. The men's 400 individual medley, butterfly, backstroke, breaststroke and freestyle to bring it home. The Aussies not amongst the very quickest of the blocks. Lewis Clairbert and Matthew Sates lanes four and three. Now starting to push through is Brendan Smith. So the bronze medalist from Tokyo not letting them get too far away down the first 50, sitting in third spot. He's sitting in third, looking at the underwater work that he's doing there, trying to stay with them, obviously. But Clairbert's flow that he has over the water, he looks as though he's almost skipping across, breathing every stroke, making sure he doesn't have any level of oxygen depletion whatsoever. We'll come into the backstroke leg. Backstroke is the stroke that you really try and do as efficiently as possible because the breaststroke leg is arguably the most critical in this race, uh, which does take up uh, a lot of energy. Duncan Scott, top of the screen, white cap, he's third and chasing. And this is where they'll really start to feel the lactic acid build up. Breaststroke, such a leg dominant stroke, but look at Brendan Smith's kick. He's brought in the big six, six feet kick. He's trying to gain on Lewis Clairbert. Duncan Scott might be fatigued from that other race coming into this, but he can do a 400 as well. It's 200 metres from that. So this is going to be hard for, um, this is going to be very hard for Brennan Smith. Can't see what uh, what is happening on the other side of the pool with Duncan Scott. Clairbert, it is in front. Clairbert out by about a body length. Duncan Scott's the challenge. Brendan Smith pushing up. Not sure that he can get there. Trying to hang on to the silver medal. Duncan Scott, a phenomenal swim in lane one. It's a Kiwi gold medal in a games record time. Well done to Lewis Clairbert and Brendan Smith. Bronze in Tokyo, silver in Birmingham. And what a great performance by Duncan Scott, the 200 free gold medalist gets bronze in the 400 IM. And not only a championship record, it was also the Commonwealth Games record for him. So the difference between the two of them, Commonwealth Games record, records, or the Games record, championship record, has to be done at the Commonwealth Games. This is for all of the Commonwealth countries to break the Commonwealth record. So well done to him, and also well done to Brendan Smith, being able to come through and secure that silver medal. Seabom Lee fifth and Kieran Pollard sixth. So the Aussies, three of them in that final. Silver medal, fifth and sixth. What a silver medalist representing Australia. Brendan Smith. we get ready for another final and from an Australian point of view the Olympic champion versus the Commonwealth Games champion the Olympic champion is not Emma McKeon in lane four it's Maggie McNeil right alongside her from Canada three Aussies in this one as well Brianna Throssell in lane three and Alex Perkins in lane six Emma McKeon though lane four the defending champion bronze medalist in Tokyo the 28 year old looking for her 10th Commonwealth Games gold medal. And the Olympic champion, Maggie McNeil from Canada, separating the Aussies. Brianna in three, Emma McKeon in four, Alex Perkins in six, and McNeil got away pretty smartly. So the black cap between the yellows and Emma McKeon and Maggie McNeil. Strokes not quite together, but not much distance between them down the pool. Yeah, it's quite quite wide the stroke that Maggie McNeil takes but Emma McCann could be leading at this 50 metre mark she does turn in first place watch the underwater work pretty cool to see who's going to come out on top of this and this is where Maggie McNeil just made up some space on Emma McCann. It was a brilliant turn from the Olympic champion so now Emma McKeon has to reel her in chasing her own place in history Olympic gold medalist in front Emma McKeon's gaining can she get there to get her own place in the history books? McNeil in front, McNeil on the touch, gets it. And the game's record, and McKeon has to wait. Brianna Throssell, bronze, a brilliant swim. The Australians second and third, and the Olympic champion is now the Commonwealth champion. The bronze.
bronze medalist, representing Australia, Brianna Throssell. Silver medalist, representing Australia, Emma McKeon. And Maggie McNeil, what a time she's had of it in the last 12 months or so. The Olympic champion gets the Games record and is now the Commonwealth champion here as well and holds out Emma McKeon. What a brilliant race that was with two absolute world-class superstars, one and two. Men's 100 backstroke. Start list for this final, and again, three Australians, Bradley Woodward, Mitchell Larkin, and Josh Edwards-Smith. They're going to go in lanes six, seven, and eight. Take your mark. A coup to the 18-year-old. From South Africa, Lane 4 got away well, and Williams alongside him. Lane 5 from England, Greenbank also of England, fourth at the Commonwealth Games four years ago in Lane 2. That's the dangers for the Aussies. The white cap of the South African Kutzer quickly into the lead, down the pool the first time, and he will lead at the turn. Will lead, let's watch this underwater work, pretty cool. See how close I've come up to the 15 metres mark, the most you can go. Head has to be up before that red line here. But look at the Englishman coming back here. Um, Brody Paul Williams. Got an excellent turn, didn't he? Woodward, All about the turn. Best of the Aussies. Now Kutza comes at him. Jeff Coat lifting as well. The Kiwi in lane three. It's Williams just in front. The Aussies going OK. Larkin finding something. Not quite there. Woodward got there. Bronze for Woodward. Brilliantly swum. A late inclusion into this team. Silver medalist four years ago. Gets a bronze medal here. And a great touch on the wall there by Kutzer. It looked like it was going to be Williams. It shows just how essential the techniques are, the, the, the skills, the touches, the turns. It was Williams, actually, who had a brilliant turn, came up ahead. But Kutzer's touch on the wall. And congratulations, Bradley Woodward. Representing Australia, Bradley Woodward. And that Canadian team has got some big names. Summer McIntosh, Katarin Savard, Rebecca Smith and Maggie McNeil. They'll go in lane five. And the Australians, Maddie Wilson, Shana Jack, Molly O'Callaghan and Emma McKeon. They are the world record holders, of course. So away then, final of the women's 4x100 freestyle relay. Guernsey in lane 1, Scotland 2, England 3, Australia 4, Canada in lane 5, Northern Ireland in lane 6, and South Africa in lane 7. It's been a good start by England. Anna Hopkin but a very good time away from the blocks and leading down the pool the first time. Not much between her and Maddie Wilson. Hopkin had a really strong start there. Maddie Wilson moved over the lane rope trying to go with her, but she surpassed her here. It's that turn, the underwater work from Maddie off that turn was fantastic, and she's taken a lead. Got a really, really flying start, did Emma McKeon, and is swimming beautifully. The lead has opened up for the Australians, so Freya Anderson for England doing the chasing. But Emma McKeon, with 50 to go now, swimming for her own place in history to join some of the all-time greats of Australian swimming and all-time greats at Commonwealth Games level. Emma McKeon missed out on the gold in the 100 butterfly earlier on this program, 
chasing is England. Can't get there, I don't think. Canada in the bronze medal position at the moment. The Australians cheering Emma McKeon on. What a way to join Thorpe, Jones and O'Neill. Ten gold medals for Emma McKeon. And the Australians defend their Commonwealth Games title. England silver, Canada bronze. It's the Aussies on top. What a fantastic swim. What a convincing win. These women, such amazing contributors to so many relay teams for Australia over the years. And incredible for Emma McKean to back up after the 100 metre butterfly final not long ago. She's used to having a big program. The gold medalist and Commonwealth Games champions, Team Australia. Australia represented by Madison Wilson, Shana Jack, Molly O'Callaghan. And Emma McKeon. One to go for the Australians, the men's 4x100 freestyle relay final event on night two of racing at the Commonwealth Games, Birmingham 2022. Take your marks. And with that, the Australians in like Flynn and away. The 17-year-old leads them off. Lane four for Australia, Wales alongside them in lane three. Good start also by England and the Canadians have got away very well through Liendo Edwards who seem to get the best of the starts. Liendo Edwards for Canada, the RAS of England. Flint Southam gets going now, pushing up into fourth, maybe just a little off that place in fifth. He didn't have a good st uh, start, Flint Southam. His stroke rate is quite a lot lower than the men beside him. He seems to be reeling them in a little bit here now, moving through to third position, but it was a great start by the Canadian. Liendo was third in the 103 of the World Championships only a month or so ago. So the bronze medalist, a very nice handover in Australia. It was a good back 50 by Flint Southam, got them into third position. So Zach in 30 in the water now. The Aussies after the first 100. We do have a lead and almost a second of it. 100 to go, less than 100. And Kyle Chalmers, position A1 for him, where he loves to be. Sometimes it's doing the chasing. Here he's going to be chased. So he'll need to hang on to this lead. Three quarters of a body length with Tom Dean coming hard after him with a big crowd right behind him. Canada in third spot. Kyle Chalmers, halfway down, needs to hang on here. It's half a body length, trying everything. Tom Dean for England in lane five, pushing and pushing hard. Here comes Chalmers, cheering on in 30, cheering on his teammates. Did he hang on? Does he get it done? Is it three gold on the night for the Australians? Yes, it is. Defending their title, new games record. Australia win, England second, Canada third. Well, wow, looking at all those times by the Australians, they were personal best times. Flynn Southam, 48.54. His pre previous personal best was 48.60. The rest of them, of course, had a fly start, but really strong swimming by all of the Australians. Tom Dean looked like he was really coming back in that final 50 metres. But King Kyle, he loves it, doesn't he? That last 25, holding them off the massive six-beat kick. What an incredible race. Flynn Southam posting a personal best time. What an incredible experience for him.